Okay, let's continue. And uh, so uh, the, re uh, the reason for this uh, presentation is that uh, in uh, risk five, when we are trying to uh, enable preemption and running uh, as trace, and we found some bug, and we found that uh, this uh, issue are uh, uh, very related to the ISA of Rix by Excel. And so I'm Andy from Taiwan and working in sci-fi. Uh, so here's my outline and I will go into uh, talk about Rix by uh, F-Trace and Rix by F-Trace and the current implementation and its limitation and uh, propose our solution at the end. And so uh probably probably all of you have used F trace and F trace is a, a framework aiming to um trace the next kernel uh at function call level and uh we want it to be enabled and disabled dynamically and we, without recompiling the kernel and we want this to be uh uh introduced minimal overhead and so uh, so to do this, uh, most of the architectures uh, use patchable function entry to uh, re reserve an, an uh, NLP at the head of functions. And uh, at runtime, it patch the first instruction to, to, to a code instruction and do a F-trace stuff. And, and if the patch goes wrong, then it will result in some very uh, strange debugging issues. And uh, so uh, here is how Rix5 uh, implement F trace and dynamically. So uh, it did, it also used patchable function entry and it, it reserved for uh, eight, uh, 16 bytes for each uh, uh, function symbol. And then uh, when, when, when we want to enable the F trace, we patch uh, those four uh, not instruction to uh, sorry to to uh, a sequence of instruction. It basically uh, loads the return address and jumps to the F trace uh, entry. And then uh, after F trace is uh, finished its processing, it jumps uh, jumps back and it restores the return address from from stack. And uh, we want this to happen atomically because if we uh, patch, uh, if, a, if one core, core is running uh, in, uh, in a halfway patch sequence and you will, uh, we will not, uh, we will have uh, a lot of issues uh, there. And uh, so in uh, respect, our current implementation is to utilize stop machine. So, the stop machine basically it, it will uh, just uh, stop all other cores to a, a busy way loop, and then uh, use uh, uh, the core zero to perform the patching to, to patch yeah, all function entries. I was gonna just walk over. And, <laughs> and then uh, so for uh, so after the core zero yeah, finish no patching. <laughs> And, and then it, it will resume other course execution. And so that uh, other course will see uh, this uh, change like instantly before uh, before it is run, running in kernel and uh, it will, and, and when, when it is start running uh, code patching, it, all other course will go into a busy way loop. And then uh, after uh, the, the code patching has done, then all the other codes will uh, restart execution. And uh, it seems like uh, the update has happened uh, atomically to other codes. And uh, so a preference is that uh, in stop machine, uh, this is the implementation of stop machine. Some, some, it is some, uh, I have just copied some pieces of code there. And then, uh, so we found that uh, uh, one function is, uh, uh, very it's suspect, and we goes into that, and we found that uh, actually this function is 
uh, being marked as no trace, it means that uh, this function, this particular function entry, will not be uh, will not be reserved for a patchable function entry, and then. Uh, we will not patch this function runtime, so that is cool, right? But uh, but uh, we can look into uh, this code here. We have some some RCU stuff related to preemption. So uh, after we enable preemption, we found that uh, we 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 run into a uh, uh, corrupted friend, and some sometimes uh, it happens. Uh, we we trace back to the the starting point points of corruption. We found that uh, it is it, it's executing on partially updated uh, function entry of this function, and uh, so uh, we have seen. Uh, so if we uh, executed on a partially update instruction, uh, things might happen. Like we will be uh, executing on an illegal instruction, or if the uh, if the state frame is not. Uh, so if or if we uh, if, uh, some instruction is not being executed because it is uh, being halfway patched, and then uh, we we will have corrupted frame because uh, the return address is not correctly stored and restored. And uh, in uh, five point fifteen kernel, we uh, after enable preemption, we see this. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, five. Okay, um, real quick. Uh, just just um, one issue with the pre of the stop machine in preemption. Okay, so you're patching four, four um, commands that have to be atomic, correct? So any, any function um, could be preempted in one of those four. Yeah. And right. stop machine will continue and work and do all the work. You can wait forever. Or stop machine, and then when it's done, that that task that was preempted will then execute half the instructions that it doesn't know about. Like so, it breaks the atomic scene no matter what you do, and you could go through and put no trace. You might as well put the no trace on the entire uh, entire kernel, yeah. which kind of defeats the purpose of having F trace. So there is actually something. I was hoping Paul McKenney would be here, but I there is a couple of things to make stop machine work. Uh, one thing is you actually have to modify stop machine, and what it, I I had a problem. I needed synchronization, and I worked with Paul McKenney. We have that uh, RCU tasks that are, are you know RCU task or task RCU or whatever it's called now. It will the quintessence state is or the quintessence state is at the schedule point, a voluntary schedule point, not a preempt schedule. A voluntary schedule. If you are able to have stop machine do that, so you run stop like a special version of stop machine to say, hey, I'm going to stop when everyone is it has scheduled. So everything schedules once or condition if it calls condition sched or if it calls condition sched or schedule, and then you stop. So it won't just go through and kick off a core on everyone. So if you can modify stop machine to say, okay, I have I want to make sure that everyone is at a preemption point. Not a preemption point, a schedule, a, not a voluntary scheduling point. So, of course, sort of like voluntary preemption, whereas it will go through, and if something's in the middle of executing, stop machine will not preempt it. It will go into, until that guy gets to a point where it schedules. Then it will like set a flag in the scheduler, or something happens where uh, it could be even a static, um, like a, a static branch. At that point, it's scheduled out. That way, you guarantee that at when stop machine executes. Nothing will be in the middle of it. Yeah, that's one solution. Um, have you looked at? I mean, what's the what's what you guys what you did? I'm just going to say, having taken a quick look at the slides, I think some of the later slides are about to answer some of that. Or the other solution. Yeah, there are some solutions on the slides, but if we let them carry on. And... But I just wanted I just wanted to say that if you wanted stop machine to work, that's one way to make it work. But yeah, we'll go on. Okay. Thanks. And so we present a way that we we want we don't want to use stop machine anymore. And so, uh, like uh, what you have just said, uh, even if we can patch this instruction atomically, like if we can uh, use uh, so if we uh, if we use those uh, sorry so if we uh, patch all uh, those 
mentioned function as no trace and uh, we still runs into error because uh, uh, if we uh, in, if, if a process being uh, preempted in the middle of this function entry and we turn up uh, F trace at that moment before preempt, uh, the, the process is getting back and then this uh, particular function uh, instruction will not be executed. And then uh, we we can uh, we observe this kind of errors, yeah. And so uh, for uh, uh, so before we uh, trying to implement our own uh, uh, implement uh, F trace implementation, we looked into some other architecture. And uh, so for x eighty six and on sixty four and MIPS and RPG uh, app, they don't use stop machine to perform call patching, and so. Uh, we want to follow this uh, architecture, so uh, we, 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 want, we are trying to uh, do that way. So, uh, so first we look into uh, ARM64. So it only catch one instruction at runtime. At boot time, uh, uh, at, at compile time, it, 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 it compiled two not into each function entry, and uh, and when at boot time it will. Uh, it will patch the first instruction to uh, move link register, and then if we want to, after the after two time at wrong time, we want to enable or disable the uh, the F trace. We just need to patch one instruction here, and uh, to patch it as NLP or patch as branch branch and link. And so for ARM, um, there they have a uh, 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 a term called concurrent modification and, and, and execution of instruction. It means that uh, these kinds of instruction can be uh, patched dynamically uh, uh, at runtime without explicit uh, synchronization. And so uh, patching NLP with BL is safe for ARM architecture. Sorry. Isn't that what D-Trace did? D-Trace, the original. No. Uh, they used one instruction, they used one no-op. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, but they didn't, uh, D-Trace, they didn't do the full function tracing, did they? Yeah. I'll well, you, it's I'll, proprietary, I'll so there's proprietary code, so I never saw it. No, but, but then Apple went ahead and did their own D-Trace. And um, proprietary code, and I never saw it. Yeah, everybody, I mean, the, the actual code you actually see without a problem, right? Uh, it's I never your saw code. It because I don't run, I don't, I didn't run Sun Microsystems and I run Apple. So what's the question? Because right now they can't share it. It's probably its own license. No, no. It. If you have your own code and you run it through the compiler, the, the code that the compiler generates is not proprietary. Yeah. And what, how do they use it through the compiler? What exactly? The so, compiler actually compiled in the no op, right? And then they um, then they re replaced it. So F trace came in in two thousand eight. So I don't remember them doing that. So D trace so, was ninety eight. Yes, but I don't remember them doing function uh, every single function tracing. But anyway, what's the point for this? Well, I mean, it, you know, atomicity for a single instruction is exactly the solution, right? Well, we don't know yet. Let him finish. But I mean, there's prior art. Is all I'm saying, and. It seems like like you should be able to do whatever was done in the past. Um, no so. one came to me with this before for the last twelve years, so you're the first person to mention this to me. I'll introduce you to Brian Cantrell. Okay. He he's the one who wrote D Trace. Okay, so uh, if I remember correctly, D Trace would patch uh, instruction with a uh, break instruction. So in for x86. Okay. No, 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 don't, don't just continue. Okay. <laughs> okay. So for uh, so uh, we can not directly copy this idea because we have to use two instruction to perform a code that jumps beyond uh, 4K. So uh, so uh, so we we see another idea on x86 and. Uh, so basically, they are, uh, they are things are uh, a bit tricky on x86 because uh, their uh, their instruction bytes are not uh, are, are not fixed, 
And so, uh, for example, it used five bytes interruption to perform a call uh, uh, in in one of the, the in one of the call instruction. Yeah, they have another call instruction. So, uh, in in kind of use a five byte call to to call a, a function uh, that that is from a distance and. Uh, so uh, these three lines are copied from the uh, comment from x x trace. So basically, uh, it, it will uh, in, in initialize per function entries as uh, as five uh, NLP, and they are all one byte NLP. And then uh, it at first uh, when when it is up, updating the uh, the, the F trace, it will first patch the first uh, NLP as uh, IMP3, uh, it is a uh, trap instruction, um, uh, a debugging trap instruction. So, uh, so it will re redirect the control flow of the uh, of the function uh, of the core executing on this function, and uh, basically, um, uh, it, it can just uh, redirect to the, the real function entry and in, in the trap handler, and and then it tries to. Uh, Encode the, the destination address for uh, for the, the the later code instruction, and then uh, it update the IMP3 to the OP code of the code instruction, and after that uh, it will be uh, the the the, uh, the other uh, the the other cores will execute on the uh, the correct function uh, uh, on edge trace. Uh, it will enter the F trace uh, correctly, and it will not see any partially updated uh, instruction. And so, uh, on RIG five, how how do we uh, do that? Uh, because uh, for, uh, for 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 RIG five, we have uh, we 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 must use AYPC and JALR pair to perform a a, a jump that is uh, relatively far. And then, uh, the, uh, so uh, as uh, mentioned before, uh, we we might encounter this kind of issue where uh, when uh, when uh, the, the 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 function uh, the core is uh, being preempted halfway in executing the this uh, four instructions. So uh, there. Here are some possible, uh, but not preferred in uh, the solution. So the first one is to try to disable and re-enable preemption at each function entry, and this is not uh, very cool. So uh, and the, the second one is to uh, limit the jump to up to a four K offset, and and this is not very foreseeable as well. And uh, the uh, the third one is. Uh, we uh, so for uh, risk by the, the maximum immediate is uh, that could be used from uh, an instruction is uh, 20 bits. Well, and, actually, get this. Uh, we could possibly encode the jump packet with this uh, 20 bits of offset, but uh, 20 bits is not uh, good enough uh, comparing. Sorry, okay, comparing can I to other architectures? Can I ask a question about the architectures? Because the one architecture you've missed out there is peer risk, which has exactly the same problem as you do, in that it's got a very limited relative jump range. And to get beyond that, you have to use two instructions. The way it works on peer risk is that two instructions are executed atomically by accident of the way the delay slot speculation architecture works. And so we can always schedule two instructions to be atomic. And so we don't have the same preemption problem. Now, I think that's an accident of the way the pipelines are constructed, but could you do the same on peer, uh, on risk five? So actually, um, since that might be an architectural thing, and I don't know if risk five has that in the specification to be able to do that. So I will actually go back to my stop, the stop machine solution because it actually works here too. Yeah. Our, um, that um, RCU scared I mean, it will slow down, but what you do is you do a bulk thing. So this is what you, this is the solution I would recommend if you really want to go without, you want preemption to work and don't want to use stop machine, you do this. You put the breakpoint at the very, very first instruction, okay? So everything from now on that's entering is going to hit that breakpoint and jump over the whole set and go on, correct? Yeah. So you put the breakpoint on all functions that you want to enable. You call us. Uh, 
SCED RC or uh, RCU tasks, now you know that everything has not been preempted because that's the thing that if you say or synchronize RCU tasks, when you do synchronized RCU tasks, that, that solves this problem. It guarantees you that no one at the return of that, no one has been preempted. Everyone's gone through a schedule. The Quinston state is a schedule, an actual schedule, which means that it wasn't preempted. So it might take a while. So you do the breakpoint call synchronized RCU tasks, update everything else because you know nothing's touching it because everything's going to hit the breakpoint now. After you get out of synchronized RCU tasks, everything is hitting the breakpoint. So you do the update, call RCU synchronized tasks again. Now everything sees everything. You remove the breakpoint and there you have it. You have the transfer fully complete and nothing will break. It yeah. might, the only problem with this is that SCED or our synchronized RCU tasks is a horribly slow operation because it requires everything to get through a preemption point. And um, it's gotten better, but talk with Paul McKenney, we might be able to improve it a bit, but there's times where it could take one second or so to get through that. That's why you do everything in bulk. You do all the breakpoints. You might have to wait a second or two, do all your changes, wait a second or two, and then you finish it and there you have it. Does that make sense? Yeah, but uh, uh, I think that it's a little bit heavy. Is it, if it, is it really bad if it takes three seconds to enable F-Trace? Sometimes it does do that because it, it because, because F-Trace actually calls RCU stats because of the trampoline. We have dynamic trampolines in the thing. That, that's why we call it because we can't, when you disable F-Trace, we have to, and we, we will delete or we want to free the trampoline that we, so we allocate a trampoline, attach it, and then when we disable it, we free it. So to free it, sometimes we don't let the, the function return until we go through the RCU tasks because we have to make sure that there's nothing on the trampoline and it has the same problem. So that's something that you might want. I mean, like I said, I would try it and see what the perform. I mean, see if it's bearable. I'm not guarantee it will be. I'm just going to say that it, it is a solution. So this also requires like the no op to breakpoint right of that can be currently executing, right? Um, yeah. So basically, it's exactly okay. The difference is this is like how x86. 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 Yeah. I wrote the code for I, what you just described is the code I wrote. So. Um, what we do on x86, because we have the same problem, we have to make sure that this, it's all CPU, it's all CPU. We have to make sure all CPUs see the state. So we put the breakpoint on everything we want. What? what? Sorry, but that's Palmer's point, that putting that breakpoint on requires that you can concurrently modify that instruction, which they can't do on this pipe. Wait, so wait, wait, so no, you put the breakpoint at the top, right? So, so but when you say put the breakpoint at the top, you at mean, the very first one, the rec. You mean not a compile time, right? No, right, you right. This is a runtime. When you want to F-trace it. Yeah, when so you want to enable it. Yes. Before there was a no-op. Okay, so let's so say you, there's four no-ops. Any number of no-ops. Yeah, 10 no-ops. Okay. 100 no-ops. Okay. <laughs> so you put the very first one, you put a breakpoint on. Uh -huh. And the breakpoint handler, when it hits that breakpoint. No, but before we get there, the, the no-op that you wrote to could have been ex executed at this while that, right while you were writing the breakpoint yeah because instruction set is not necessarily an atomic yeah doesn't behave as wait wait you so wait you can't put breakpoints on <laughs> so i think the key thing here is i think what palmer is saying is that the, it is not guaranteed in that case to execute as either a breakpoint or a not it's what arm would call it can't execute as any instruction wait so my question is can you apply breakpoints to the kernel not if you want them to work correctly. Now, no hardware actually behaves that way, so we kind of paper over it, and we can do that for F-Trace as well. Okay. Um, I would actually work with the hardware vendors and enforce this. No. you know, Okay, so this when I did this for Intel, it took us over eight months to get... We implemented it and, it, and shot and shipped it out. To, so people were running this code, and it was eight months after it was inside kernel, uh, inside Linux, and accepted and people executing it before Intel came back to us and said, yes, you can do that. So basically, I think this is a strong enough case to push the hardware vendors to do it. And now all the hardware vendors on x86 make sure that this works. Yeah, and in practice, this happens, you know, GDB and stuff. But you, yes. It's got to work. Yes. So but I was nothing saying it works. No, so, okay, yes. Then, then you can't use breakpoints, period. You can't use this case at all. So my... 
I'm not a hardware person. So I'm only telling you if breakpoints works, this will work. Yeah. And so I, I'm cool with that, right? It, right. You know, as long as th that's kind of an understood. Right. And if, if it doesn't work, then then you've got to go back to stop machine. That's it. Yeah. Your only solution is stop machine. Yeah. And there, there used to be some bits in some of the various specs about this, but not right. anymore. So now there, there is also the interesting wrinkle where, um, so it doesn't work for breakpoints, but the no op to illegal, architected illegal instruction, which traps yep. to the same place and therefore it doesn't really matter. For that one, every even even if you fetch each bit in arbitrary order, you still get uh, either illegal instructions or um, not scary instructions. So it, it's exceedingly unlikely that anybody is going to you know manifest invalid. So so you could actually technically put just if you could put an invalid instruction in there, and yeah. it will it will only see legal or invalid. Right. Yeah. Um, then you make the invalid instruction into like a breakpoint handler. That's it. They they, they literally go to the same yes. point already. There's no right. differentiation. So, you, so, so everything is hitting this. The same. Is yeah. going to take an exception and go to the breakpoint handler. That breakpoint handler is going to move the, RP, uh, the yeah, IP yeah, address. Yeah. Then do so. You still are basically implementing breakpoints. Yeah. No. It's, uh, that's, that was my point. Right. Is it happens to be the case for that one that the bit stuff works out, right? right. Which is, makes it really unlikely that any hardware is going to ever do something super weird there, right? Okay. But it's still not in a spec. Neither is half the crap yeah, I do in Linux. Yeah, no, it, it's it's fine, right? It's just like that 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 that's why we ended up right having a discussion about it. Which I'm saying, um, do, uh, did you have any more? Oh, uh, yeah, I have one. to say two more. And uh, so we were uh, 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 going into that page. Uh, I want to mention about uh, BICCIF in uh, Rex Five. Uh, it means that uh, whenever uh, 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 the uh, risk by core support this, and uh, uh, the naturally aligned instruction would uh, could be updated uh, uh, atomically. Yeah, so uh, we won't uh, hit into a uh, halfway uh, patch instruction if the instruction is uh, like if a, a four byte instruction is aligned at the four byte boundary, uh, we could uh, store to that address and then. Um, Either a new instruction is being executed or the old instruction is being executed. There's something that you guys could do too. And so uh, going into our uh, proposed solution, uh, so we reserve more uh, MLP at function entry and uh, we want it to be a, a, a kind of trampoline line approach. And uh, so when, when, com when in compile time, there are all MLPs. And when, when at boot time we uh, think uh, RISPI has uh, some, uh, we, we must be uh, the the uh, uh, so the the address uh, of uh, uh, eight byte uh, uh, double word should align at the eight byte boundary, or it cannot be or it cannot be stored atomically. So we want to align uh, the trample line into uh, a byte align address. So we have two uh, two uh, scenario. So uh, they are uh, uh, they are quite the same, but uh, we can just look at the first one. So uh, at point point, if if if, if the uh, the F trace is disabled, we place the jump instruction to jump to the real function entry and and update the. Uh, the, the rest of the instruction to be uh, either to load the trample line here and and and, and skip the trample line here. Yeah. So this. Uh, so uh, when when we want to enable the F trace, we just patch the first uh, four byte align uh, again four byte align instruction to a UIPC which load the upper piece into uh, upper piece of uh, of program counter into uh, a register and. Uh, and then we we try to load the trample line here with the load double, um, and then we jump to the F trace target. Yeah, and that is our approach. And it depends on uh, uh, being uh, all functions being uh, aligned to four byte boundary. And uh, on on GCC, uh, the we have to uh, uh, use uh, F align function along with F uh, no uh, F no guess uh, branch probability to uh, to enforce all functions to uh, be aligned at four byte boundary because 
uh, if we uh, don't use uh, we, if if we don't disable the uh, guest probability uh, flag, uh, some code function will be uh, will not be aligned to the uh, uh, required boundary given by that align function, and um, that is the first one. The second one is uh, we we have to uh, uh, reserve more bytes to add each function entry, and uh, it is a uh, uh, five five hundred k increase of size code size with uh, one twenty two k of functions. Yeah. Yeah, so what's the, um, I have to make this quick because uh, the conference is now over and I got to put things away. Um, what is the, uh, or have you tested the overhead of these jumps? Uh, I haven't tested it. Yeah, so you really want to see, okay, what's it like to have the jumps in there compared to not having it at all? So anyway, yeah, real quick. Sorry, I was going to say, um, on ARM64, I've been messing around with um, some of this recently in f -line functions specifically. So. I've had the, I've hit the same issue there with GCC and cold functions, other things. Clang seems to do the right thing, uh, but if we wanted to get that cleaned up in the kernel somehow, I would be very interested in doing that or working with you for that. Yeah, if we want to. Uh, okay, yeah. so let's uh, not go over time now because we get yelled at. Yeah, well, I have to. I'm actually supposed to meet someone. I have to shut these things down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm responsible for the conference. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>